my brothers welcome to mr potato awesome fitness tips once again and today we are going to be reviewing breaking down my first training program the first training program that i'm going to be releasing in the next month and the idea is very simple i need to explore the ideas that i'm that i'm putting inside this training program and it's going to be a power building program for using full body a full body split three times a week so let's get to it bros let's get to it i prepared a couple of slides because that's the way that i know how to do things and so basic general considerations about the training program it combines the basics of powerlifting bodybuilding and calisthenics not exactly calisthenics is more bodyweight exercises like pull-ups lunges and pu push-ups body weight squats and all the basic PE shit that I always uh, say to you guys it's the best type of warm up that you can introduce to your programs and to build a, a solid foundation of strength size and athleticism so it's a um, a program designed to attack everything all at once it's periodized to maximize hypertrophy and strength so you, the, the volume landmarks that are going to be introduced in the program is, uh, is, is all already cook, cooked up inside the program. Yeah, and the periodization, utilizing the, the correct percentages of the, your one rep max to maximize your strength in the basic power lifts. Uh, it's systematized with ob objectives, to, objectives to accelerate your understand, understanding of training itself. Well, with this, it's the what really makes this program different from the other programs that you might find online is that I'm really trying to create something that helps you self-regulate, that helps you understand what you are doing inside the gym and allow you to fucking decide what you are going to do despite what is saying in the fucking, in the fucking exercise sheet, you know? And it's ideal for fucking beginners, intermediates, and experienced, experienced lifters alike coming back after a break from the gym. So if you had, if you already got big and strong, but in the last couple of years you would, you you were not training, the program is pretty good for you to get back to where you were before. And lastly, it's based on scientific principles of strength and hypertrophy training. So there's a lot of physiology inside what I'm going to be producing. And the goal is teach you the physiology while you are training. So creating actionable ways to understand what the fuck the physiology really means. So that's the, the, the best thing that this fucking program will do for you is, is teach you what the fuck, why uh, cer using certain rep ranges, what is happening behind, uh, inside your organism, inside your physiology, what is happening when you take, why take five minutes uh, of rest in a squat while in a lateral raise one to two minutes is enough. So we, uh, the, the program itself will have all that information cooked up inside it and it, it will be built like a curriculum, you know, so you, I always loved in, in, in martial arts, when you have a fucking curriculum, that established way to develop your fucking game, to develop your training, you know. And lately, I grew up in jiu-jitsu, and jiu-jitsu was pretty much do whatever. The, the the teacher went there and just say, do this drill, do that drill, and there was no systemic approach to it. And in the, the last couple of, of years, five, ten years, there's a guy named John Danaher, and he started creating a system, and I really thought that was absolutely brilliant, you know. And that's what I'm trying to do here, something similar. Uh, accelerate the, the path towards you being a novice lifter and you being an advanced lifter. Not in the physiology itself, because building the muscle, building the, the strength takes time. You cannot, uh, you, you cannot uh, surpass your basic physiology, but you can build your understanding so you can improve way faster than if you just went to the gym and uh, did whatever, you know? So... The, advantage, the advantages of the training, this, this program is that it focuses on bar, big compound barbell lifts. I should have put in this slide that it also uh, it takes advantage of basic bodybuilding principles using higher rep ranges. Usually people get married to a fucking training style. And let, let's say you, do, you are doing your basic strong lifts 5x5 five five and you think that everything above 6 reps is a, is a blasphemy, you know. And no, bro, there, there, there's 
specific exercises have specific ways to be leveraged in your program. And that's one of the things that we are going to be doing here. It develops strength, coordination, myofibular hypertrophy, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy through a multidimensional approach. So the, the periodization scheme, the way you are the program is structured, it, it's meant to let you become the biggest and the strongest that you can be, you know? So that's fucking awesome. I'm really proud of what I'm doing with this shit. And relatively low frequency, making it ideal for pe people with busy schedules. So three times a week, bro, three times a week is pretty manageable you can be the busiest motherfucker in the world and i know that i'm a fucking busy motherfucker and i can train three times a week no problem i can find time to do that and a high emphasis on fatigue manage management to avoid plateaus some of you guys if you guys already went to the gym for a long time you will feel that the fucking training is too light sometimes it's not that much volume in other portions of the fucking of the fucking structure you will feel that it's just too much volume but it, it all it all has a fucking purpose in the beginning it's going to be really easy and then it will start to get really fucking crazy and yeah you guys will see as we move forward in this shit and once again it teaches the the, the training concepts the the my main goal with this program is teaching the concepts because fuck if you run your starting strength if you run all all, all the other training programs out there they already teach you how to fucking lift you know and here i want you to to, to create an understanding of how why why you are doing the things that you are doing so you can once again self-regulate and and design your your future programs and design your fucking training your own training philosophy <clears throat> so everything has advantages and everything has disadvantages so the disadvantages is first it focuses on the uh, on the big barbell compound lifts so some people don't like that and some people can't access that so Although the training program will focus on squats, bench, deadlifts, overhead presses and shit, the ideas and the concepts behind it can be applied to any any type of strength training. So even if you are not a big fan of barbell lifts, just un, uh, learning and seeing the program will help you it will help you with your training as well. It requires a focus on recovery practices, in particular sleep and hydration. The uh, nutrition, I'm not going to even touch touch on it because you guys know you need to eat your protein, you need your caloric surplus if you want to get big and strong. But the main thing, especially if you are a beginner, if you are a beginner, the nutrition borderline doesn't in, the, the, doesn't matter at, at all. The main thing that it's going to provide you with gains when you are doing your whatever fucking training is sleep and hydration. If you go to sleep without proper hydration, if you go to if you don't have a, a set schedule of sleep, no fucking program will make will yield good results. So make sure that you are putting all your recovery practices in place. And another disadvantage is that the tra it's a training program for people that likes to train. So don't it's not something like 15 minutes and you're done. You you will need at least 60 minutes and sometimes depending on your work capacity up to 120 minutes in the gym to finish each workout but if you yeah, but that that's the the best programs you usually spend more time in the gym the people that try to convince you that 40 minutes workout is the way to go hey bro they they are selling something usually you know and another disadvantage is that if you are dumb and you think, hey, I don't need to know all that, you will find it complicated and you will trash what I'm trying to do here. And the last disadvantage, which is a big one, especially for more advanced lifters, is that it lacks specificity. It's not high on specificity at all. Its, it's, it, it, its goal is to build a foundation of strength and strength understanding and size and if you want to get other program other programs will make you get stronger faster other programs will make you get bigger faster but this will build like a solid foundation and go in every direct direction at the same fucking time so without further ado let's take a look at this motherfucker here is the basic uh, the basic the split itself it's a su suggestion 
the days that you use the that you in, that you do the training it doesn't really matter but a, a basic suge suggestion is training three times a week on mondays wednesdays and fridays if you want to put on tuesday thursdays and saturdays that's also it's up to you it doesn't it doesn't really fucking matter as long as you are introducing three workouts in a week it can be it, it all it all it's, it's all just a question of how fast you can recover from one workout to the to the other and we have eight phases in this program and <clears throat> i was going to split it in weeks it was supposed to be an eight week program but i decided to change to phases because i really want you to grasp what we are trying to achieve with each phase and only move forward to the next phase <clears throat> once you grasp that knowledge once once you manage to create that adaptation in your body so phase one is greasing the grooves essentially you will be doing pretty much a basic planet fitness program you will be doing tons of exercises and lots of fucking repetitions with low intensity you don't need to go beast mode it's if you are already an intermediate running this program you can pretty much treat it as a deload the first phase the first phase you will be just going there introducing stimulus to a, to a fuck ton of muscles and using a wide array of different exercises the second phase is base building you will be determining your one rep maxes in the basic squat the squat bench deadlifts and overhead presses so it's pretty much a strength phase <clears throat> but we are going to go when we explain the the phase two you will see what we are trying to achieve with it phase three is hypertrophy level one hypertrophy level one is when after we build the base with the fucking main compound moves the big the big four we will start shoving hypertrophy training on top of the big four you see the basic template of phase two is pretty much uh the strongest shall survive and starting strength strong lifts is the fucking it's pretty much a fucking five by five okay but when we start to introduce hypertrophy on top of that we are going to be milking sarcoplasmic hypertrophy alongside it so we are going to be ramping up volumes la just likely just adding a couple of exercises phase four is hypertrophy level two and we are already introducing sarcoplasmic hypertrophy to the training, but now we are going to be shoving some supersets and shit and some special metabolite techniques that will take really make that that program, that basic power building program into geared towards hypertrophy. And phase, phase five is maxed hypertrophy, which we are going to be pushing the limits of our recovery so we are going to be going to mav the maximum adaptable volume and mrv for some some body parts i'm going to initially emphasize chest and shoulders because i think the vast majority of people want to build build <laughs> doing their first training program during the first time that they run a proper train training program the thing that will make them feel feel awesome will be developing a gnarly chest and ni nice shoulders so in the max hypertrophy in this uh first model of the program will be we will be pushing sh chest and shoulders to to the limit and after we grown and we are already big and we develop fucking nice levels of hypertrophy throughout the entire body the program enters phase six which is strength and we are we will be reducing our fucking volume we will be reducing the number of exercises and the number of sets that we are using and start ramping up the intensity to hit phase eight in which phase eight is pr land bro so we will be using periodization schemes and ways to really make you fucking strong so <clears throat> from phase six seven and eight it's nothing more than a ba the uh, it, for those of you that understand wh what I'm going to say next, we are going to be introducing either step loading or wave loading to fucking maximize our fucking progression in strength in the following weeks after we maximize hypertrophy. So today we are going to cover phase one, two, and three. And let's go, bro. Let's go. So phase fucking one, greasing the grooves. The objective is building metabolic resistance through novelty stimulus. Uh, I've already put a, uh, uh, under here, 
uh, a warm-up suggestion because a lot of people doesn't understand what the fuck they need to do to start to warm me up to warm up before training so look before you train just make sure that everything your body in your body is feeling good okay so rotate your ankles and wrists give some fucking rotations to your neck do some knee ups some kick ups some basic pa shit you know some ba basic th things that you do in this in, in the school you know when you are do doing pe class you know five to ten arm swings to each direction five to ten leg switch swings in each direction this is an active war warm up and then sit 15 to 30 sec seconds on the bottom of a squat, put your elbows inside your, your, your knees and push forward to really open the rib socket and really let your body, let your, your, your body access that range of motion that we, we, will be required of you when you are doing the fucking squats and all the other heavy lifts. And lastly, before starting the workout, just break a sweat doing whatever fucking cardio machine or whatever fucking cardio that you want to do. Just break a sweat, 5 to 10 minutes. Just ra ra uh, raise your heart rate a little bit. And yeah, essentially that that's the fucking, the fucking warm-up for all the exercises that we are going to be doing. And another consideration is for the... If you can't access a full range of motion on the squat when you go up for the for, for sitting on the bottom of the squat first do a fucking stretch for your for your quads so just hold your 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 you hold your your foot behind your butt hold it with both hands and then on the next time you try to fucking to fucking squat you you will access a, a longer range of motion a, a deeper range of motion and if that doesn't cut it, then just give a little stretch. Just, just touch your toes, hold it there for 5 to 10 seconds. And when you get back and try to go to the bottom of the squat with your body weight, you will probably be able to do it further than you had before. And if today you is barely breaking parallel when you go squat and without body, without any, any resistance at all, then this program it's not for you yet you need to first develop the mobility to fucking reach the range of motion and access the range of motion so you can protect yourself when you are lifting heavy later so yeah i put the i i forgot to put an explanation on what we are trying to achieve with what what build metabolic resistance through novelty stimulus means so let me explain that in the first weeks of training, any fucking thing that you do will yield a ton of fucking stimulus for your body to send metabolites to that fucking muscle to prepare that fucking muscle later to res to survive resistance resistance training. So the workout template number one, these templates are just suggestions. You can literally pick the fucking the, the, the workout that they will give you in any Planet Fitness or whatever fucking basic gym that you go to train. And you can pick whatever fucking workout and that workout will get you sore. That's what, what we are trying to achieve with the workout. You don't need to go crazy. You can go with 50% intensity is right, right, up, right up here. Go with 50% uh, intensity. Don't try to fucking grind reps. Don't try to be strong. Don't try to be big. Don't try to break PRs. Do, not, do none of that shit. It's not time to fucking use progressive overload yet. It's not time to use anything. It's time to just go to the gym. Do the fucking lifts. Do as many fucking lifts as you can. Do six lifts like in the template here. We have leg presses, seated cable rolls, machine chest press, tricep push downs, easy bar curls, and lateral raises. If this workout is getting you sore, your body is still adapting to novelty stimulus. Your body is still learning how to fucking engage in resistance exercise. So here's another template for you in case you want to do something more geared towards powerlifting and shit. So back squats, 6 to 8 reps, 3 sets, 2 to 3 minutes of rest time, pull-ups and chin-ups, 4 IIR. 4 IR means you can leave four four reps in reserve and you are and you are good to go. In this phase of the in this phase of the training, you can fucking go to failure if you want, no problem. But what you are trying to achieve once again is just 
get sore. Anything will get you sore. If you go there and do five reps of squats, I, I, I recently just went back to squats and I, I've put something that is pretty much 30% of what I used to be, uh, used to be squatting at the same body weight that I'm, that I am right now. And it was enough to get my legs fucking sore as fuck because I wasn't accustomed to squatting anymore. So listen, if anything that you do in the gym during the first first phase of the program will get you sore. And if you are coming, if you are already training consistently and you are using this program to fucking, and you are using this program to just to move forward and keep progressing in your in your efforts in the gym then treat this as a treat this as a deload so barbell bench presses six to eight reps three sets two to three minutes of rest times with 50 percent intensity uh dips just go there and do as many fucking dips as you want incline dumbbell curls because it's the best kind of curl that you, you can be doing is sitting in an incline bench let your arm hang perpendicular to the floor and just boom, grab, uh, bang 10 to 12 reps there and the reverse pack deck to hit the fucking rear delts and you're good to go bro both the both these templates you can swap them around uh, as think about it this way you have you ever heard of muscle confusion sometimes people say hey you gotta confuse the muscle you need to uh. Muscle confusion is not nothing, nothing more than novelty stimulus being introduced to the to the muscle. The muscle fibers that are uh, when you let's say you are accustomed to doing fucking fucking squats, and you you go there and you do squats for three fucking months. The motor units re, uh, involved in in your squat technique, in the way that you squat, they are they are going to be adapted to novelty stimulus. They are going to be adapted to metabolic stress of strength training. Every time that you do a rep against resistance, a lot of glycogen and phosphocreatine and all the fuels inside the fucking cell, they are burned and fermented and they cause revoke inside your, your muscle fibers. And when you change, and this, this generates acidity that generates damage. And when you change the angles that you are using, when you use a completely different exercise, let's say you now you change to leg presses. When you start doing leg presses, you can go really light and you can just do pretty much what I'm saying you, for you to do here. You can do 12 reps in the leg press with 50% the intensity that your the maximum intensity that you can use. And even though you are accustomed accustomed to squatting heavy as shit, your your leg presses will make your legs sore as fuck. So that is just an indication that those muscle fibers, those motor units that are not involved in the in the back squat but are involved in the leg presses are not adapted to the metabolic stress of strength training. So that is novelty stimulus. So you are not confusing your fucking muscles. You are not generating more adaptation by doing so. You are just training a muscle that is untrained, training a portion of your muscle that is not adapted to strength training itself. So another template here for you guys to, in case you are, you want to, to switch it up. It's ideally, um, take one to two week to two weeks in this first phase, the grease in the grooves phase and use this three, three, try to use this three templates. At least if you want to do Monday, you do one Wednesday, you do other and Friday, you do other, you will be introducing a fuck ton of metabolic stress in your entire body you are going to be sore as fuck and just move forward to the next phase which is base building where you are going to start fucking power lifting itself when you're not feeling sore anymore from this really really easy uh, workout okay so moving forward base building so the objective on phase two is to learn the big four, learn how to brace, and determine your one rep max for the big main moves. The big main moves, the squat, bench press, deadlift, and overhead press. To learn the big four, use whatever weights you feel comfortable, and don't be afraid of the big compound lifts. It's you against you. What I mean by that is that a lot of people think that they are going to go to the gym and start squatting or start deadlifting and their backs are going to implode. Or they are going to put a little bit of extra weight on the bench press and they are going to be stapled and decapitated by the bench press. Bro, it's not that easy to get hurt, you know? It's not that easy. Usually, people get so fucking inside their heads and they start... They, they ask for fucking injuries. 
So if you just let your body and you go there and you pay attention to what you are doing and you try to be stable, you try to be just a little bit stronger than you were at the, at the, last, uh, the last fucking workout, you are not going to get injured. And listen, it's you against you. You don't need to prove anything to, any, to anybody else outside of yourself. So don't go shoving weight because uh, uh, one shot or, or a nap or whatever say to you, yo, use more weight because that's not uh, strength standards this, strength standards that. Yeah, strength, strength standards are awesome. You need to be pursuing fucking uh, goals and fucking numbers as you progress in your training. But it's in, in this first phase. You don't need to worry too much because you are learning how to fucking execute the lifts and you are teaching your body how to have the coordination to survive that heavy strength training. So look for look for cues and tips online. That's that's obvious. And if you are here watching this video, you are already pretty much doing this. So go to fucking Alan Troll, Johnny Candito and fucking put put uh, go on youtube and search how to fucking overhead press how to fucking squat tips and cues to squat and deadlift and, and you will learn a fuck ton of things you can also go to my page on Quora and there i have a fuck ton of instructionals on how to execute the lifts with see some serious breakdowns of cues and everything else that you need to understand when you are executing them and also i'm going to be producing more videos uh, as i progress with this youtube shit i'm going to produce videos doing this instructionals too so yeah you can just stick around and you will learn learn that shit too bro uh don't be afraid of the big four lifts you're not made out of glass and once again i'm i will stress this a lot don't be afraid of fucking barbell movements they are not going to break you in half you are not made out of a glass, bro. Just use sensible weight and let your body learn how heavy shit feels. And increase the weights at your own discretion. Don't be on a rush for results. Express via numbers, reps, weights, and shit. Be on a rush to learn how, how the movements feels, how to get stable, how to get conf confident under the bar. Confidence is everything to keep progressing in strength training. If you are always pushing your own limits and always going to the heaviest that you can go, it's just a matter of time for you to get hurt. So pay more attention towards how you feel and how you are executing the lift. If you are being explosive, if you are stable, if your knees are caving in, if your arms are shaking like crazy on a on knees are caving in in a fucking in a fucking squat or your fucking arms are shaking like crazy when you are doing bench presses and shit if you are rounding over extending your back when you are overhead pressing pay attention to how you are executing the movement and not to not too much attention where in putting five everybody says put five pounds on the bar put five pounds on the bar but listen if you put five pounds on the fucking bar, bro, are you strong? You are not strong yet. So right now, it's your utmost priority is not developing bad habits and understanding how to execute the lift. You are only going to be strong with time, bro. So you have all the time in the world to move faster if you learn first. So pay attention to technique first. Pay attention to what is happening with, with you, what, what are your weak points and stuff. And that's the way to go, bro. Next is learn how to brace your spine. And listen, I, I don't understand why people overcomplicate bracing so much. Bracing is ridiculously simple. You just inspire forcefully and trap, trap the air inside your lungs. That will already force your spine to assume a, 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 a good position. Now, in this position with your lungs completely filled up, you can still hyperextend your spine. But if you actively blow the air out like you were using a fucking straw, let me read what I said here. Now, actively try to blow the air out as forcefully as you can, but imagine you are doing it through a tiny straw, so like this. When you are doing that, let, 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 let me show you. I will fucking inspire all the air that I can, and then I will blow the air out through, the, through a tiny straw. Super, uh, this lightest fucking amount of air is escaping my lungs, okay? Here I can hyperextend. When I'm doing that shit, it's pretty much impossible for me to not boom, assume a stable position and let my, my spine stay in a neutral position. 
So that is the best queue that I've uh, that I've ever got in this fucking shit for fucking for stabilizing your spine and maintaining your spine in a neutral position. This shit came from fucking a friend of mine in a my friend, not not a friend, uh, a cousin of mine that is a high level athlete and yeah that's all i can say i i even asked him if i could name drop him here but he said no bueno no bueno <laughs> so yeah your car should be tight as shit and when you are doing this tap your car tap it engage your fucking the muscles on your fucking car and tap it you feel that they are solid as shit when you are doing that even and if you have a lot uh, great coordination on your diaphragm diaphragm and shit you will be able to just stabilize your spine and brace like right now if i want to brace i don't even need to do that i can just and i'm braced okay and ideally trap the air inside you generating pressure without letting the air out and that's that's something that for low repetitions if you are going for singles for for doubles or or, or triples you don't really need to let the air go out you just hold your fucking breath it's called the valsalva maneuver so when you feel the air all the all the fucking air that you can and then you forcefully try to expel that air but you trap the trap it inside you and that will generate a ton of fucking pressure and it's like uh, it's like picking a fucking bag of doritos and if the bag is completely sealed and you can put whatever the fuck you want in, in on top not whatever the fuck you want but you can put like stuff on top of it and it's not going to smush the fucking the fucking bag but if there's there's ways for the air, air to escape if you put a coin and you put, put a fucking pen on top of the bag of doritos the pen will fucking smush the bag of doritos so that's the idea of using the valsava maneuver and generating a ton of internal pressure using air by leveraging the power of your lungs when you fucking actively blow the air out your diaphragm is forced to engage automatically so if you have a lot of coordination on your diaphragm, you are a singer or some someone that know that trained to to know how to use your diaphragm, then this will be completely intuitive for you. It's exactly just that. It, it's it's the same thing as holding a pitch when you are singing. You just actively contract the fucking diaphragm and you're good to go, baby. What's up, Mark? How you doing, bro? Doug Hepburn system was my first effective power building program for gains. Oh, I forgot to to check it out. Who oh, I, I never I never saw his program, Mark. What what's the meat and potatoes of it? It's uh, basically uh, he used the basic for, uh, the basic compound lifts and what what else he did he th he throws on top of it. So moving forward, <laughs> old school from the six. 50s awesome i'm going to take a look on it i'm going to take a look at it for sure doug hepburn why the fuck i never heard of him so in the base building phase another another one of your objectives the things that you need to be focusing on learning how to do is learn how to ramp up in weights so when you are doing the basic compound lifts although i suggest Always do that active warm-up before training, but listen, I'm an immature guy. I hate to do all of the fucking warm-ups when I'm, when I'm pressed on time. So ramp up, warm-up directly in the movement that you are using that day. So start with the bar, hit a set of five, see where, how you are feeling. Just, let's say you are doing a squat, you just sit on the bottom of the squat and you feel your fucking legs and you look at what, how is your, the tension in your ankles, the tension in your, in your knees and everything. And then do bang five reps, rest for a minute, add a plate or a quarter each side, depending on your strength levels and go for five reps again. You will ramp up for squats specifically. As you ramp up, pay attention to the tightness of your core and the pressure in your head. Once it starts to get hard to maintain, start your working sets. So let's say, once you are you are doing your fucking uh, ramping up in weights in your in your warm up sets, once you start feeling a ton of fucking pressure, that's the point where okay, I'm already at pretty much seventy percent of my one rep max. Going further than here, I'm going to be really needing to fucking conjure my strength and pay attention, ex express everything. And that's not the goal of base building. Base building is 
we are going to go to a point where this is challenging, stop there and start our working sets. For the bench, the same, the th <clears throat> for the bench, you just pay attention to bar speed. And once it's starting to slow down, start the working sets from there. In the deadlift, use a double overhand grip, you know, and once the grip starts to slip, uh, it's time to start your working sets there. Because if you simply fucking switch the fucking grip to a mixed grip, you are going to be deadlifting way more. But that's not, like I said before, that's not the goal of base building. In base building, we are just revising the fucking exercises and we are running the fu a fucking 5x5 five five super easy just to fucking determine our fucking one rep max, which is our objective here. Let's see what Mark said on the chat. Yes, bunch of low reps plus one and the three higher rep sets plus one. Hmm. I think I got it. I think I got it. So yeah, the first the first in the first workout during the base building phase, just go there, do the five by five, use that fucking ramp up strategy that I just mentioned it, and you were good to go. Don't worry too much. I forgot to talk about the overhead press. The overhead press is simple too. Once you start overextending and you feel that you are going to a position where you need to grind the rep and you are turning your overhead press into a fucking standing bench press, <laughs> that's the point where, okay, stop that shit, cut it out. And yeah, moving forward, we are going to learn plus sets. Plus sets is the last set in, in a, the term, a specific workout. And in this template, we are using plus sets for the overhead press and in the back squats. So what you're going to be doing here is five sets of five. And on the last set, you will unwrap it. And by unwrapping it, you will determine what is your true one rep max for that movement. You just log how many reps you got and you go online and you go on Google and put one rep max calculator and type what, how many, however many reps you got there. If you got more than 12 reps, then ramp up the weight before you, before you do that because you need to be using a weight that doesn't allow you to go beyond 12 reps. So right around 12 reps is the limit for you to be able to determine your one rep max. So if you went here in the plus sets and you try and you hit 12 reps, take another week. Determine your fucking one rep max on the back squat on the, on the following week. <clears throat> bench presses hit a five by five no no need to try to become stronger right now we are just determining we are building the base that later we are going to uh, to use to fucking build a, a fuck ton of muscle through myofibular hypertrophy and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and in the uh, end uh, later portions of the periodization scheme we are going to be hitting strong PRs and really fucking increasing our strength <clears throat> so yeah workout three just learning the plus sets it's the same thing but this time we are doing back squats just five by five not going crazy and on the bench press and the deadlift we are going to try to determine how many fucking reps we can use with that seven we can do with that se about 70 percent intensity i put about 70 percent intensity because Determining your intensity when you are a beginner is pre determining your true on rep max and what is the intensity that you are doing is not really that easy. So that's why we are using this plus sets and this strategy to really determine where you are in, in strength levels. And only go away from the phase two once you say to yourself, yo, I think this is a movement that I can go for eight reps and you nail it, okay? Before you are able to uh, uh, self-regulate and understand your own limits, don't move forward. Just keep applying these strategies. Keep doing the fucking plus sets at the end of the at the end of uh, of the workouts in like the, the workout two and workout three. And one of the things that is going to happen is that is that you are going to gain strength like crazy because a fifth set with with as many reps as possible is one of the best strategies to fucking improve on strength but you will learn how you will learn that you are not that fucking weak that 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 set that you thought that you would be able to do 7 to 8 reps suddenly you are going to 12 and then you need to restart the fucking base building until you find that fucking that fucking set that limits you at seven and eight at nine reps. And after you you 
finish base building, we start the hypertrophy level one. And the goal here is to learn the basics of progressive overload, how to fucking apply progressive overload without doing a fuck ton of math to do it. Uh, the basics of fucking rest times, how you fucking uh, should perceive your sets to understand why you are resting that long and why you are not because different types of exercises require different rest times. And we are going to learn reps in reserve. What does reps in reserve really mean? And introduce, start introducing sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, a sarcoplasmic hypertrophy component to the training. A lot of fucking people don't, don't. A lot of fucking people that do power building, they pretty much are missing on the gains of high rep training. So you need high rep training, and you need uh, the the you you the power lifts. They are going to provide you with a fuck ton of mechanical tension, and that's one pathway for hypertrophy. And there's stretch mediated hypertrophy, uh, overloading the muscle through a stretch position, and that will yield more hypertrophy. And sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is a completely different pathway. So you can leverage both. So that's why a good hypertrophy workout or, or a good hypertrophy program will leverage everything. We will leverage multiple dimensions for you to improve faster. So the basics of progressive overload, you are going to leverage your rep ranges. So you are going to, instead of using five by five, you are using four to six reps. If you can't do four reps, you just add a little bit of, you reduce a little bit of weight. And if you can, if you can do more than six reps, you add a little bit of weight. And that fucking shit will yield, yield you results without doing math for a fuck ton of time. For one to three years, and you, and listen, for guys like me that doesn't live this shit, that doesn't, that I'm not competing, I'm not trying to be the strongest in the fucking, the, the strongest motherfucker in the world. That, that that can yield results for more than five years, for sure. You can just go with the simplest fucking strategy of all time and keep progressing for a long fucking time as long as you are applying consistency. This is a fucking concept developed uh, that the Soviets already used, used it for a long fucking time called step loading. You just go there and you keep keep banging reps, keep banging reps, and people um, start to think that oh I'm I'm not fucking improving, I'm not fucking adding weight to my bench press, so I'm not improving. But that that is not the case. How you feel from one session to the other? If you are managing to do those same number of reps with way more ease, with lay, way less pressure, with less rest times, you are improving as well. So let's just focus on the basics of, of progressive overload. Staying within the rep range. If you go, can, if you can go beyond the rep range that that are prescribed, you ramp up the weight. If you cannot go to the rep range prescribed, you reduce the weight a little bit. So, like I said before, leverage muscle growth through sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. We're going to introduce high hip repetition sets uh, right after one of our main big compound exercises as finisher for smaller and as finishers for smaller muscle groups. So you went there, you did your fucking bench presses, heavy, as heavy as, not as heavy as you can, because that, that will only be leveraged on the strength portion of the periodization. But you hit a fucking gnarly stimulus to myofibular hypertrophy. You are now you you gave a ton of fucking stimulus to you you, you give a ton of metabo uh, mechanical tension stimulus for myofibular hypertrophy. And right after you finish your fucking bench press, you hit a ton of fucking push-ups and you fucking obliterate the already fatigued muscles to really ramp up that met metabolic stress and introduce sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and also to focus on smaller muscle groups like biceps, rear delts, side delts. Those motherfuckers can take a fucking beating, so we are going to attack these bitches. <laughs> Uh, moving forward, we in this in this another objective of the first hypertrophy phase is understanding basic rest times. So some exercises will have rest times from one to two minutes, other two to four minutes, and other four minutes plus. So when an exercise requires just one to two minutes, it means that the muscle is super tiny, 
the to clear up the metabolic stress on that muscle will be super fast and it doesn't stimulate in anything on the central nervous system so everything that needs to recover is your car cardio cardio respiratory system so you just need to get your breath back you finish like 25 fucking lateral raises and you are out of breath you are fucking <laughs> you are fucking red your head is fucking red there's a fucking vein pulsing in your forehead once that vein go back to normal once you're not breathing heavy you can already hit those fucking lateral raises again you don't need to stop for anything else if you have uncanny fucking cardio cardiovascular capacity you can fucking finish a complete fucking training of lateral raises in a matter of four to five minutes you can rest 30 seconds 50 seconds 60 seconds because literally there's no uh there's no there, there's not a lot of fucking metabolic fucking destruction happening in the muscle itself and if it has the blood flow from that fucking from training that heart will cover that fucking will, will clear that fucking muscle like this so when a muscle is a little bit bigger let's say you are trashing your fucking chest or uh, your triceps and when I say the muscle is a little bit bigger, there's always a smart ass saying, "Oh, but shoulders are the biggest, one of the biggest muscles in the in the in the organism." But listen, shoulders they have three. The three heads have three different fucking have three different had had three different things that they do. They had three different movement patterns that they they do. So if you are doing fucking something that is stimulating the front delts, it is not going to be trashing your rear delts and your side delts that much. The, the sun, like front raises doesn't even activate your fucking rear, rear delts uh, at all unless you have some weird biomechanical uh, set point that your body sometimes develop. Like my traps get fucking pumped when I'm doing biceps curls. Go explain that thing with biomechanics. That's why... A heavy focus on biomechanics when you are pro, uh, building your fucking program it's not really that great of an idea because your body creates these set points that are just unpredictable it, it, it's based on how you walk around how your posture what you do for a living how which muscles you develop the most they will always try to carry the bulk of the load so for me i always i always had my fucking shoulders rounded forward from punching and doing martial arts and now my fucking traps take the load of uh, everything because the traps are responsible for stabilizing the the shoulder the shoulder girdle when you're fucking in this stupid position you know so lastly the central metal, the central nervous system when you trash your central nervous system when you are using overhead presses, bench presses, leg presses, whatever movement that really requires you to express a ton of fucking strength, you need more time to rest because the central nervous system is the one that takes the most time to fucking reestablish it reestablish its levels and its ability to perform. So when you are doing heavy ass compound movements, take more time. Take more time between sets. Don't try to be a hero because you will only be limiting your fucking ability to progress. Moving forward, we have a basic template for reps in reserve. So you can understand this is this is just an interpretation of reps in reserves for you to have a, a, a uh, as we talk about, we are going to be talking about reps in reserves in the in the when I when I start showing the template itself. So just so you can understand what six RIR mean, four RIR, two RIR. So six RIR, you felt the weight was heavy, but you finished the set before it started to get challenging. Usually, when you are doing a fucking, let's say you are doing a bench press and you are in your last warm up set. You remember the ramping up that we were talking just a second ago. When you are ramping up, and let's say you are, your one your one rep max on the bench press is like 235, and you during the ramping up you are using three to five fucking reps for each 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 jump. When you go with 225, it's it's likely challenging. But if you stop at five, you know you are nowhere near your limits. But it still is likely challenging. 
The only thing that doesn't happen is that the the bar doesn't fucking doesn't fucking lose speed. You don't need to grind anything. You ha you are in complete control of that fucking weight, and you finish your set there. That's what six six RIR means. You know it's challenging. You are feeling the fucking weight. It is heavy, but you are in complete absolute control, and you can express your strength effortlessly. Four RIR. The set was challenging, but you finish your set when the movement start finished. Ah, uh, fuck. But you finish it your set when the movement started to slow down significantly. So for RIR is when you are going there and on the last couple of reps that you are doing, you start to see the movement slowing down. On the last rep, sometimes if you if you are a, like a lot of people are afraid of the weight. This is usually the point that people think they reach failure. In the bench press, I see this all the fucking time. When it starts to get heavy, when it starts to get grindy, they think, oh my God, I'm going to decapitate myself and they stop the set right there. So a lot of fucking people just go to 4RIR and think that is failure. But no, failure is really different than doing that. 2RIR, the movement started to slow down significantly and you grind a couple of extra reps. So imagine you are on the bench press and it starts to get slow. Now you put the, put the weight down and now you think, mm, I don't know if I got this. And you go and you are there's still a, a good amount of speed on the bar. And you fucking finish it. Now when you are going to go down again, you are thinking, okay, now I'm fucking pushing my limit. And you go and in the last, you go and finish it. That's 2RIR. And you get out of the fucking bench press and your head is red and everything. And listen, if I put a fucking gun to your head, I guarantee you that you have had one more extra rep in that fucking bench press. And to really access fucking one RIR, bro, and failure, failure is an, an unaccessible, unaccessible on bench presses at least for the vast majority of people without the use of a spotter. But... One RIR is uh, you grinded through the last rep so much you almost thought you were going to miss it. At one point of the lift, you got almost got stuck, and for a miracle, you move forward. So one RIR is way more fucking rare than people think. I see a lot of motherfuckers online say, "Oh, that's one RIR. That's nine RP." No, bro. No, you had more inside you, and. Zero RIR is failure. Is is you think you went to failure? How do you go into failure on a bench press? Just with the use of a spotter, you just can't do that. But in in isolation exercises like lateral raises, that's where you go to fucking failure. And the high repetition work will teach you a lot about failure. So that's one of the greatest things that doing high repetition will, will provide you. Because when we are accustomed to doing more of compound lifts and barbell lifts, we think we are going beast mode, but we are way, way uh, uh, behind going fucking beast mode and going to failure. But the good news is, is that with the fucking primary main moves you don't need to go to failure you don't need to go berserker you don't need to go fucking crazy so our objective for phase three is learning these four things understanding the rest times understanding reps in reserves introducing sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and learn the basics of progressive overload you are only going to move to phase four once you fucking understand these fucking things and once you can apply it and and intuitively, you know what you're, what the fuck you are doing in a set. So wor workout one, this phase, a lot of people will stay a long time in this phase. Workout one is pretty much a full body workout with a push emphasis. This is pretty much a push pull legs with full body at the same fucking time. So we are going to be doing back squats for four to six reps, four to six reps. Four RIR, four RIR is essentially once it starts to slow down significantly you stop the fucking movement. If you want to go crazy and you want to try to herniate a disc, go beyond that, but it's not fucking necessary. You will be using 70% of your one rep max, and remember that in phase two, the base building, we determine not one, our one rep max, and 70% with four IR is just cake, bro. It's 
easy peasy work but remember this is a hypertrophy fucking phase so you don't need to be going crazy fast reps when it starts to slow down you fucking finish your fucking set and what we learned in the first phase about regulating and feeling your fucking body tight and maintaining that posture tight maintaining your fucking bracing on, on the second phase sorry never lose that shit that that portion of technique you should never be losing so in my fibular listen that's the best thing about squats bro the best thing about squats is that you don't need to go nuclear to you the ton of results while on leg extension you need to call for your ancestors and fucking pray for god's mercy while you are banging fucking reps and feeling your knees exploding on squats you can go there Put the barbell on your fucking back with 70% and 4 IR. It's retarded. It's, it's, it's hard because squats are always hard. But it's nothing crazy. And it's going to yield gnarly results. What's up, Bobby V? How you doing, my brother? I recently saw a video of a spotter merely staring while he, he, the bencher failed to lift and was stuck in the gym. Yeah, fuck, bro. Like one of the things that I that I that I that I pr try to promote is like don't go crazy with fucking with how heavy you are going on the bench press and stay on 4 IR, 2 IR and the the percentages of your one rep max really low on the basic mo compound movements you will progress just fine and you will not need a fucking spotter and i listen yeah i got stapled under the bar exactly with this template exactly with this portion of the template that i that i'm showing right now but let me move forward and i will exemplify let's say i'm going to talk about it right now in the bench press with four to eight reps and 70 percent of my one rep max I was going crazy with the number of sets and right here we are going to be going for five sets so that's a lot of fucking bench press and two fucking reps in reserve what happens is that sometimes you just miscalculate when to fucking end the the set when you are going for two rep uh, two reps in fucking reserve and the good news is is that you are doing more repetitions you are with a weight that is way fucking uh, lower and that will only happen on those last fucking sets so if you need to do the role of shame and get out of the of the fucking bar let's say i was using like 87 kilos a 87 kilos is something that i can manage you know i just held that fucking shit and pretty much did a fucking sit up with the with the with the weight and it's it's rather easy to get off get get out uh take the weight off of you you know so that's one of the good things uh, about about training with a hypertrophy in a hypertrophy oriented sense so after the back squats throw a bunch of pull-ups pull and chin-ups there and wrap it so as many reps as you have but stay at 4 IR. So if you have ni 9 reps is your max pull-ups, do 5. If it's 12, do 8. If it's 1, then forget RIR and go there and do 3 fucking sets of pull-ups. And you, you can... 3, three is, is even too little. I need to adjust this. If you can't do fucking 4 pull-ups, just go there and do a giant set. Do a giant set up to 10. So do one rep, jump, do the fucking eccentric, do whatever you need to complete one rep. And do a giant set, meaning you are going to do one rep, rest a little bit, do another rep, rest a little bit, until you complete fucking 10 total fucking reps. And that will build your capacity to finally fucking do pull-ups, and you will not have to adjust the program anymore. Uh, after bench press, since this is uh, the, the portion that has a push emphasis, we are going to be introducing sarcoplasmic components. So right after we trashed our fucking, our, our fucking chest, front delts, and, and triceps, with uh, five sets of four to eight in the bench press, we are going to do push-ups and unwrap it to failure until we can't fucking do any push-ups anymore. Your, your sets will probably look like this. Let's, let's say the first set you are going to get... 25, 30 reps. In the second set, you are going to get 12 to 15 reps. And in the third set, it, 
pretty much doesn't matter you are going to get one to eight to twelve and that's it you know you are going to lose a lot of reps from one set to another but the pump you are going to experience in your triceps and your on uh, your chest is just fucking legendary and while your triceps is fucking extremely filled with blood and metabolites and all that good shit it's time to go for some curls baby because <clears throat> when your fucking triceps is generating pressure in your biceps in the in the in the circumference of your arm the most glorious fucking pumps on the on, on the biceps happen so fucking go for pick whatever curl you like to do it can be easy bar curls concentration curls inclined dumbbell curls whatever curl you like if you like fucking cable curls doesn't matter whatever curls you like and you feel your fucking biceps working in this game and go for 12 to 20 reps one to two minutes rest between each set. Oh, I forgot to, to say that on the push-ups. One to two minutes between each set. So we are going to, we are shooting for muscle disruption. We are shooting to fuck you up. Okay, so don't, it's not time to try to be technical and try to be precise and everything. No. This is hypertrophy training, and hypertrophy training is more of a fucking marathon. It's more of trying to go beast mode, trying to dis disrupt the fucking muscle. So 12 to 20 reps on the curls, and one to two, go to failure, go until you can't curl anymore, and one to two reps in between each set. That's why there's the, the rep range is so big, because if you pick a weight that you can do 20 for the first set, in the second set, if, if the weight is challenging enough, you are not going to get 20 with that little rest time and you are going to go to 15 and then you are going to go to 12 and the way to progressive overload in this type of movement is to keep banging keep doing the the training like this until you are you're completing 20 reps on three sets and then add more weight um, same idea for lateral raises be, and this is all designed to make you feel awesome and look in the mirror and think that you are bigger than you fucking are, you know, because after a gnarly session of bench press, you fucking obliterate yourself with push-ups. Then you get that awesome fucking pump on the biceps and then the lateral raises complete the, the, the pump on the, on the arms, bro. And you did all that in a matter of fucking 15 fucking minutes. You finish the push-ups, the curls and the lateral raises. And the fucking, the fucking pump on the arm, on the entire arm is absolutely gnarly. You look yourself on the mirror. You're going to take a fucking awesome picture and you post it to me on Cora so I can fucking be proud of you, motherfucker. <laughs> Let's go, bro. The second workout here is a pull emphasis. So this is, you will probably say that it's too much, but it's not too much. It's because the back requires destruction. You need to do a ton of fucking volume for the back. Back and legs are the hardest muscles to develop. And contrary to legs, there's only a, 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 tiny, a tiny portion of people in the world that really want to, oh, I want the biggest legs that I can. But I guarantee that every single one of you motherfuckers want to have an early back. So we are going to do an, a workout that fucking provides back hypertrophy. So starting with back squats and yo, everything starts with back squats in this program. Four to six reps, four IR, 70% of a one rep max, three to five minutes of rest time, three sets. Follow up by overhead presses just to shove a fucking shoulder, uh, shoulder stimulus on your full body routine. And four to six reps, four IR, same fucking deal as the, as the back squat. And then we are going back to the fucking pull-ups and chin-ups go for pull-ups and chin-ups extend let the fucking chin-up stand your fucking body there's the i, I made the video called chin-up uh, ratings and scorecards and there i give a fuck ton of instructions on how to use chin-ups in your program so go there and leverage that to take this training to the next level and go on rep for reps in reserves just like i explained in the in the in the workout one of this uh, of this phase of the program and after that, bros, it's deadlift time, bro. After you fucking engage those fucking lats and make sure you are feeling your fucking lats when you are doing the pull-ups or chin-ups because when you are fucking stabilizing and getting ready to fucking deadlift, you want to feel the lats engaged. You want to 
imagine you are putting your fucking elbows in your back pocket and feel the let's fucking engage. I, I, all, I, I almost cramped right now trying to engage my let's here. Oh, fuck. I just, I just did, did, did pull-ups and dumbbell rows. And yeah, my lats are fucking sore. Are fucking pumped up or uh, pumped up right now. Uh, go for your fucking deadlifts. Go for heavy deadlifts. 80% of your one rep max. Three to six reps. Four reps in reserves. Four to six minutes of rest time. But you, if you need to go beyond that, go beyond that. Five fucking sets. That's a ton of fucking deadlifts. Most programs don't don't prescribe that much, that many deadlifts. But listen, we are going to use, uh, I'm going to make instructionals for you to know how to uh, brace and maintain your posture and not be afraid of deadlifting a fuck ton. Deadlifting a lot is imperative to, de to develop a gnarly back and to get strong as shit. So please, don't be afraid of deadlifts and use this fucking template. And follow it by deadlifts, you are going to be using dumbbell rows. With 15 to 20 fucking reps. And listen. These dumbbell rows are meant to be light. And you need to just make sure you are assuming an angle. Where you feel your fucking upper back contracting. And you are just milking every ounce of fucking metabolites and metabolic stress. That you can introduce to that area. To really create the maximum pump on the upper portion of your back. It's just that that you are doing. Don't need to go heavy. You don't need to go crazy. You just go there and really try to feel your back is squeezing. To do that, instead of fucking rowing, thinking of bringing the fucking dumbbell to your fucking to your fucking here, essentially, imagine you are trying to fucking uh, elbow the ceiling. You know, you are in a perpendicular in a. In, in about 70 to 80, 80 degree angle. And imagine you are tro trying to uh, do a fucking elbow behind you. Okay. Throw the elbow fucking behind you. And feel the fucking back is squeezing. Is That is your objective with this dumbbell rows. Usually when I prescribe dumbbell rows heavier. What I'm trying to achieve is developing my lat. Is really giving that gnarly stretch to the lat. But right here we are going light and that is not going to be a possibility with lightweights. But what we are trying to achieve is really getting that peak squeeze on the top of the contraction. And to finish things off, it's the rear delts. And one thing that some people don't understand about the rear delt. The rear delt is a part portion of your fucking back. The rear delt is not a portion of your fucking shoulders. It, it is designed to make your back look awesome. So hit rear delts, one, uh, 15 to 25 reps, 1 to 2 minutes rest between each set, and 3 sets of those. And listen, this, after these deadlifts, these finishers, these exercises are finishers designed to introduce maximum, uh, sarcoplasmic, uh, maximum sarcoplasmic component to your fucking upper back. Uh, let's say what Bobby V said here. What is your opinion on supersets and giant sets? For example, curls after bench or curls and lateral raises immediately after. I'm extremely addicted to that shit. I think they are awesome as fuck. And in this training program, we are going to be exploring them on phase four and phase five. Let me go back here just a little so you can see the template the basic template that I'm designing, and all, all this is going to be available to my to my sub subscribers on Substack and Cora as a fucking ebook and PDF, and I'm going to r write more instructions and shit. So basically, phase one is greasing the grooves. You are getting back is essentially a deload for more experienced lifters, and for novices is like teaching them the basic stuff and teaching their body how to fucking lift. So it's Pretty much a, the most basic workout you've had ever seen. Uh, phase two is ba base building. We are going to be developing a base of power, in, uh, uh, power lifting base. So we are only going to be doing the big four and establishing our one rep maxes and shit. Each phase can last one to three fucking weeks. So depending on your level of experience, you can go through the eight phases in eight weeks. But once you are 
if you are more of a beginner you can take one to one two or three weeks into between each phase because you don't you are not on a fucking rush to develop anything at all any 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 fucking stimulus will develop a lot of shit so for phase one is hypertrophy we are just intro just starting to introduce sarcoplasmic hypertrophy sets to the program Hyper uh, phase four, which is hypertrophy level two, we are now using the giant sets, super set, myo reps, mechanical drop sets. There's a ton of fucking weaponry that I'm going to be exploring in the f in the phase two. And phase five, we are going to push our fucking volume to the maximum. We are going to push the volume for specific body parts to the maximum recoverable volume. So you guys can understand what I mean when I'm when I'm doing the exercise breakdown and I say maximum recoverable volume. 25 sets of lateral raises what does that mean in a program you know because on the vacuum sounds like something that is doable but in a program is utter insanity and in this program we are going to explore uh extreme uh high extreme it's not extreme it's just really uh focused hypertrophy work and the last portion of the of the program the phase six seven and eight is pretty much we are we take all that volume that we build up to 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 build muscle and we reduce it back to um to a manageable recoverable volume uh and we are starting to fo and we will focus on strength a ton of fucking strength training we are we will leverage wave load periodization and all the fucking knowledge shit about real pure strength training to hit phase eight which is pr land which is where you are going to be moving heavy fucking shit if you do this fucking this fucking system properly i guarantee some nasty prs to anybody bro any fucking body you will, you will get fucking bigger and you will fucking hit prs for sure pr PRs not because I don't I will not say PRs because a lot of the people that fucking uh, follows me are a little bit are old farts like me are uh, washed up meatheads that already peaked to 700 fucking pounds on the deadlift and that in your fucking 60 I can't pro I can't promise that you are going to be deadlifting 700 pounds again bro but yeah man. Yeah, that's the goal. Let's see, Bobby V, another question here. Training calves is very uncomfortable for me. Hard to maintain balance. Not sure if normal. I think I already expressed my opinions about training calves. There's only one type of calf training that I fucking endorse, which is running, sprinting up hills and doing it, jogging and running. Yeah. Hi, focusing on hypertrophy on calves, bro, I'm... I don't understand, unless you are a professional bodybuilder, I don't understand why would you do that, okay? Unless you are training the tibialis and the muscles on the front portion of your of your lower leg, because those, are, it's intelligent to, to stimulate those to prevent injury on the knee joint. Uh, what's up, Jason? How you doing, my boy? Hell yeah, man. Uh, hope you are doing awesome. My Broding Apprentice is sick at home. No prayers at the Iron Temple today. Oh, fuck. Damn, bro. And when, when we are fucking sick, it's even better to not go to the gym because if you hit up gnarly workout, it reduces your immune system, you know? And I, I'm always, I'm always fucking this up, you know, I, I'm getting sick and I just, I know I'm getting sick. I feel the energy levels going down and instead of fucking stop it, stop fucking training. I go there and I just, ah, let's do squats. And the next day I'm fucking obliterated, you know, thankfully it's been a long time since I got sick. Uh, I think I didn't get sick in the last two years. Outside, I, I, ca I caught COVID, but I didn't feel a fucking thing. <laughs> I, I, I think fucking, fucking running for that fucking awesome cardiorespiratory fucking system. And the last day, the workout three of the phase three of the program is with leg emphasis. We are just doing a basic, simple, easy strength uh, power building program up, um, up until now. 
but adding a little bit of extra sarcoplasmic hypertrophy on top of it. So start with back squats, four to six reps for IIR, 80% of your one rep max. Notice that in the leg emphasis day in the full body workout, this back squat is slightly heavier than the other, the other back squats that you are doing because we do squats every fucking day. And rest times three to five, you can go uh, even more than five if it, if it is required for you to hit as many fucking reps with as many fucking weights as you can. Set this three, and right after fucking squats, you can do this even with body weight alone. I want 30 steps of lunges, okay? RIR doesn't matter. I put 10 RIR because it doesn't matter at all. If you are already pretty great at fucking lunges, then add a little bit of weight, grab two fucking dumbbells, two 25 uh, pound dumbbells in each, each hand and 30 steps of fucking lunges, rest two to three times and then and do three total sets of this. Bro, your legs are going to be torched. I, I know a lot of people that did this fucking workout here with me, people that are strong, people that are accustomed to doing this kind of shit, uh, of training for a long time. And I still stole this, this little idea from my wife and she said, do that and see how you fucking feel. And bro, the first time that you do this shit, you barely can finish the rest of the workout so that's why i just put some bench presses here because you are not you don't need a fuck ton light bench presses does doesn't need you to have fresh legs to execute even uh, yeah light bench presses don't so four to eight reps on the bench press after doing the lunges four ir 70 percent of your one rep max three to five minutes of rest time three sets sets in total and once again, once we hit fucking bench presses and our fucking triceps is greatly stimulated, then we do curls, lateral raises, and rear delts. Rear delts do whatever the fuck you want. Uh, I prefer the, the inclined dumbbell, dumbbell decline, incline dumbbell lateral raises just because it's what I have available in my home gym. So I develop a ton of mind muscle connection doing that. But the reverse pack deck works, face pull work, uh, works. And if you have problems with fucking shoulder injuries, injuries, focus on the face pulls because the face pulls is pretty great for fucking injury prevention, you know, because uh, it's stimulating the fucking rear delt, which this movement does, but it's also rotating your humerus here. So when you rotate your humerus, you also stimulate the rotator cuff, the teres muscles, and all the other real state in the back, in, in your back. So doing fucking face pulls here is pretty awesome. And for now, that's uh, everything that I had prepared from co to cover on the power building program. And I'm going to, to make slides for the phase four, five, and six and covering and following live streams. And that's when things start to get really complicated and awesome as shit. So, yo, let's review some fucking exercises. Let me... Let's say what Jason said here, the 80% and 70%, is that based on plate weights or how you feel? That's based on the base building portion of the program, which is, where? where is it? Ah, here. No. No. Base building. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Ah! In the second phase of the fucking of the fucking of this fucking program, we are de determining what is your our base one rep max, so we can use it further on the other phases of the of the program. You know, so use a, uh, essentially just use plus sets to de develop the to determine the one rep max. So you go there, you do back squats, you do five sets of five with. Something that is manageable, something that is not crazy, okay? Because the base building is right in the start of the program, so you, we are not trying to get str super strong and super big yet. But on the fifth set, we go for as many reps as possible, up until 12. If you surpass 12 reps, then you are going to light and you need to redo the, the, the base building, the base build, building portion. And it's, it's extremely intelligent to not try to, if you missed, okay, 
you are using a weight that you thought was going to be to be you are you are not going to hit 12 reps then take another week trying to find the the weights that are go good for you to work you know because you don't need to be going to the heaviest fucking squat that you can but you cannot be using a squat that is too fucking light and you need to pay attention on how you feel and use the plus sets the sets that you go on rep on the last set to determine where you are um, to establish the number of uh that is your fucking one rep max then you just log how many reps you got let's say you did seven reps with whatever, how many weights you are using. And then you log it and go on Google and use a one rep max calculator. And it will say to you how much is your one rep max. And then you progress using that. Well, uh, in the training, when I release the PDF and the ebook from for this shit i'm going to provide a fucking chart for you guys to know how to do that and of course of course you will get that fucking shit for free jason <laughs> all you guys are going to get that fucking shit for free but i don't know if bob is subscribed to any any of my of my uh, paid supporting and shit like substack and quarter but yo bob you are one of the guys that keeps me going in this fucking live streams and everything that i produce so you're going to get for free bro just for showing up here for me <laughs> hell yeah bro uh teach me a lesson for being late sorry no don't worry bro don't worry and you can watch that shit later you can re-watch that shit later so I'm going to break down some exercises now and we are going to break down fucking lat pull downs because I like uh, uh, breaking down exercises and they are the clips that generate more traffic. So let's take a look at the fucking lat pull down here. So first, the best usage for lat pull downs is as a fucking primer. What is a primer? A primer is an exercise that you introduce before a heavy lift to engage the muscles that need to stabilize or that will be actively actively contracting in that other movement. So that means that the lat pull down is not really that great of a fucking movement to develop whatever the fuck the lat pull down is trying to develop. The rep ranges to use the lat pull down, it's right around 12 to 30 reps. So 30 reps when you are using it for fucking as a fucking primer and right around 12 to 15, 20 reps if you are trying to develop myofibular uh, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy using this movement. If you try to go like for myofibular hypertrophy, we are going to, on the breakdown of the scores for the exercise. I'm going to be more specific about that. So sets right around three sets to six sets. It's pretty good for the lat pull down. The lat pull down requires a ton of fucking volume to provide you with good with good stimulus. Rest times one to two fucking minutes is more than enough. And reps in reserve is failure. Go to failure on lat pull downs. There's zero reason why you are not going to failure on lat pull down because it's an easy fucking lift to you execute. It's so easy that I don't like this the the fucking I don't really like what it provides because it's to me is essentially a lie of a fucking movement because I go there and I think that I'm doing a fuck ton of stimulation for my lats and my lats only grew when I uh, retired the lat pull down and decided to become a pull up machine, you know. So and rowing, rowing like crazy, rows and pull ups is what is going to develop your lats. But the lat pull down as a primer, as to rehab, to use it in a deload, it's a pretty good movement. Uh, so strength standards, no strength standards first, because trying to be the strongest lat pull downer of the world is stupid as shit. And each fucking machine has a completely different standard. So every time you go do a lat pull down, you pretty much don't know exactly what the fuck you are doing. Maybe that is just because I tend to train in several different gyms. So I end up like completely clueless if i'm do i need to only pay attention to how i'm feeling i cannot trust that the fucking machine says 50 kilos 60 kilos 7 kilos i never know what the fuck the machine is saying i need to start the lead pull down always paying attention okay this is feeling heavy this is feeling light this is i always miss the mark when i change the fucking machine so 
no strength standards. Don't try to be fucking strong on lat pulldowns. Just go there, ramp up weights according to your fucking rep, the rep ranges that you are using. And that's everything that you need to do about that. And in deloads, I put a no, but I, I was supposed to put a yes there. Because not only you don't need to deload your lat pulldowns, the lat pulldown is a great move to execute on deloads. You know, a, a lot of you guys are exactly like me. And when it's time to deload, we we simply don't have the maturity to fucking deload properly. And lat pulldowns is an awesome movement for you to go there and feel that you are working. You know, just do like lat pulldown for 12 fucking fuck, fucking reps and go crazy. Pull, put, put as much weight as you can as you can on the lat pulldown. Be my guest. It's not going to be that that great of a, of a stimulus, and I know a lot of people will try to shoot me because of what I'm saying right here. But the thing is, it's not that the lat pull down is completely, absolutely useless. It's that pull ups and fucking barbell rows and dumbbell rows and rows in general are so much better that it becomes stupid. Why you are not trying to become the best rower that you can if you want to have nasty lats? It's why I don't think you you should be using lat pulldowns to develop your lats. And in case you are stubborn and you really want to develop your lats using the lat pulldown, here's the volume landmarks. To maintain your fucking back the same size as it is, you will be using five to six fucking reps uh, sets with lat pulldowns a week. If you wanna see slow progress with lat pulldowns, then it's more on the on the notes of five to ten fucking reps. And one thing that I didn't mention before is that let the back requires uncanny mechanical tension to develop to a, to to really grow. The back is too fucking strong. Okay. The back, the posterior chain, everything is interconnected. Because everything is interconnected, everything kind is kind of hit all at all at fucking once. And the lat pull down not only is already fucking working a ton of fucking muscles that are interconnected and distributing the force throughout the entire system. It are, it also gives you extra stabilization that you don't need. Okay. So there's a there's so much extra stabilization. There's the stabilization of the pad on top of your thighs. There's stabilization of the fucking the 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 way that the cable is set. It's just too much. Your back needs to work. You need to use movements that really make your back work and that allow you to use super heavy fucking uh, weights. But back to the fucking uh, volume landmarks for our lat pulldowns. If you really want to make sick ass gains and steady fucking gains using exclusive lat, using lat pull downs as your main move for back development, then the MAV is right around 10 to 18 sets a week, and that's a ton of fucking work. I don't like that at all. And the maximum recoverable volume, which is the volume that your lat pull downs will uh, start to disrupt the rest of your fucking program and require a, a gnarly periodization scheme for you to not implode and burst, burst into flames is right around 18 to 24 fucking sets. Uh, ra, 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 let's see what Jason said here. You said you weren't going to do lat pull downs. No, I'm going to do every fucking exercise because, yo, people need to know, bro. People need to know. And lat pull downs is one of the exercises that a lot of people do all the time, you know. So I'm going to boycott that motherfucker. No, I'm not. I even changed one of the one of the criteria for scoring the movement to primer because the lat pull down is a great fucking primer. It's a great exercise to put before you go for heavy overloading shit and so ultra gnarly fucking workouts that are going to involve and require that you engage your fucking lats for stabilization. Uh, thank you for talking about lat pulldowns. I was wondering why it didn't feel like it was doing anything. My tempo has an assistant pull-up. Pull up. Thoughts on that machine? I want to do pull-ups. I'm not really a big fan of assisted pull-ups too because... 
when you are trying to develop your your first reps of pull-ups when you are going from one rep to five or zero reps to one the best thing that you can do is go is do that one rep and grind it and grind it like crazy you see right here right down here you see it here uh, I'm talking about how to develop your fucking strength. These numbers on the side here is one to three reps and 85% of your one rep max. If you want to develop strength on your squats, if you want to develop your strength on your fucking deadlifts, on the bench press, on whatever fucking movement, what do you need to do? You need to fucking go for one to three reps with 85% plus of your one rep max. So if you only have one or two or three fucking pull-ups on your fucking on your fucking capacity right now. That means that every time you go there and you do three fucking pull-ups, you did pure strength training, okay? And that will yield insane results for your fucking uh, central nervous system to develop more reps, more actual fucking strength and coordination to do more reps. So the best way to develop your pull-ups to do 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 10 and 12 is the limit where just just go in there will, will be enough where you don't need to go crazy with pull-ups to, to develop. Because let's say if you want to go for like 25 strict pull-ups, you need to become a pull-up machine and go do pull-ups pretty much every fucking day. But, but to develop to 10, 12, 12, 12 strict pull-ups, one to three reps is the way to go. It's the way to fucking go because you're developing actual strength that will allow you to do more reps later. So that's it. The lat, lat pull downs, the MV5 to 6, MEV5 to 10, MAV10 to 18, MRV18 to 24. So let's start ranking this motherfucking thing. And we are going to start with range of motion. If to have a great range of motion on the fucking lat pull down, use that that specific handle that the dude on the picture is using. That handle is so fucking awesome. It gives you a neutral grip and allow you to fucking go down here and and go beyond your bring your elbows beyond your lats, and that's where your where your lats are, are going to be mostly engaged when doing the fucking lat pull down. If you use the the tiny fucking grip, that one that too too narrow or if you use the super extra wide grip what you are doing is placing more emphasis on your rhomboids which the rhomboid sits below the middle the middle traps and are responsible for stabilizing your scapula it's this fucking thing that let me see that that pops off when you try to 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 become a bullfrog you know when you shove your your traps up and it's not you are taking out the emphasis of the lats okay when you go super fucking wide you take the emphasis of the lats out of the movement so stick on that fucking position stay at shoulder width and if you don't believe me go take a look at dorian yates dorian yates is one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time and see how he rolls see how he do pull downs see how he do pullovers he has the greatest lats that ever that bodybuilding has ever seen and he everything he's do he do he does is at shoulder width so how did he accomplish that? It's because he's smart as fuck and he trained correctly and he understands his anatomy or not, or he's just a fucking midhead, but it doesn't matter. What happened, What matters is that it works. Stay at a shoulder width grip when you are doing lat pull downs or whatever uh, back exercise that you are trying to emphasize. Your lats, bro! Hell yeah! Uh, fuck man, can't do one. If you can't do one pull-up, Jason, do start with the negatives. Jump to the bar and just hold yourself there. If you can't do that, if you can't do the, the just jump into the bar, holding and doing the negatives slowly, then start with hang uh, with dead hangs. Start with dead hangs. Grab the bar, hold yourself there, and and, and stay there for as long as you fucking can. Build that shit up until you can hold a dead hang for one minute. Once you start to hold it for one minute, then I want you to do sca uh, scapular retraction. You are just going, you are there, you are hanging, and you just lift your, sh lift your chest and pinch your shoulder blades together. Just hold yourself there. And that's everything you need to do. Hold it for 
20 to 30 to 30 seconds and once you are feeling comfortable doing that then you just grind your fucking reps you can uh, uh, you can move to doing the, the negatives or if you are just a crazy psycho bro just every time you see a fucking a fucking pull up bar try to pull yourself as hard as possible even if you fail you are informing your body yo i want to do this motherfucking shit and that will be a true one rep max okay that will be a complete beyond what you can do and that will yield awesome fucking central nervous system stimulation and improve upon your strength like crazy it's the fast the fastest pathway to fucking developing your first pull-up is just going there and grinding that fucking rep like a crazy person and i i say this from experience because i got my fucking pull-up uh, my first pull-up when i was still like 35 percent uh body fat I had the luxury of having a pull-up bar in my living room, so every time that I passed through that fucking thing, I would try to do the fucking the fucking first rep like a crazy dude, and eventually I got it, you know? Like, it took, like, four to six weeks, if I remember correctly. What's up, Sara? How you doing, my boy? Oh, good, bro. So, yeah, if you use that, that, that good handle right there, the range of motion for the lat pull-down is... It's okay, it's above average, but since 99% of motherfuckers on the world either do the stupid ass fucking ultra wide grip pull down that just limits the range of motion or use the super narrow fucking stupid thing and come here, then I'm going to give it a 3 on range of motion. It's not really the best range of motion. <laughs> That's it. Three for rum, baby. And now it's where the fucking lat pull down really shines. It is as a primary exercise to engage your fucking lats before you do your squats, before you do your deadlifts, before you do your pull up. No, no, not before your pull ups. You can do before pull ups, but it, it doesn't make sense. Uh, before you do your bench presses, your overhead presses, all these movements, the main barbell fucking lifts, all of them requires you to have great connection with your lats for you to improve and for you to uh, stay safe while trying to be as fucking strong and powerful as you can so as a primer before doing these movements the lat pull down is absolutely awesome so to execute a priming exercise it's usually done in circuits you usually do three three exercises for, for example, if you are going to bench, you can do hope triceps pushdowns, lat pulldowns, and let me think of something, uh, some bend, uh, bend, bend rip aparts or something like that. But it's it, it's essentially that you are preparing to overload the muscles on your fucking uh, ah, for, that you are going to be using on the bench press, and the lat pulldown is one of the quintessential muscles for you to engage and create the shelf where from which you bench upon so alongside your triceps it's great to prime the muscle to bench press heavy as shit so to do fucking priming priming work you will be using 20 to 30 fucking reps it's a ton of fucking repetitions use really slow really low rest times and less than 30 percent of your one rep max so what that means is when you are in the set and you are doing your 20 to 30 reps, instead of reaching 20 reps and feeling your muscles burning and everything going crazy, it needs to feel pretty much like cardio with weights, okay? That, that's what, how a priming exercise needs to feel. You need to feel the muscle contracting, you need to feel the activation of the muscle and the blood going there, but it's not really to get stronger it's just to send blood to those areas and allow you to reduce your risk of injury so the lat pull down absolutely awesome for priming it's a full six bro it's a full six for this just so i can say that the lat pull down has some usage and it's not absolutely total garbage <laughs> because it is because the way 99% of the world use this movement is complete, utter garbage. Uh, so for sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, which is 
introducing high levels of metabolic stress to the muscle, increasing, burning all the fuel that is inside the muscle fibers and uh, increasing the levels of acidity that is in there. So the muscle is, uh, so the organism has no fucking option but to send a ton of metabolites to reestablish the pH of that muscle cell and make the, the muscle not corrode and destroy itself. Uh, the lat pull down is not really that great for that because the back is such an int intricate system and every every fucking muscle is interconnected and sharing that fucking load so targeting what you are trying to uh, metabolic stress what you are trying to destroy is absolutely insanely fucking hard insanely fucking hard so the to do sarcoplasmic work use more than 12 reps all the way up to 30 30 percent to 70 percent of your one rep max but the lat pull down because the fucking back shares the load so much because the fucking pads on top of your thigh is adding extra st external stabilization to the movement so your posterior chain is already stabilizing everything and distributing the the bulk of the load your your legs are locked into place you are seated there's a ton of extra st stabilizers there are limiting the capacity to introduce re uh, real fucking powerful stimulus to the fucking back and the lats and even the lats and everything so no for sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is a fucking tree is not that great at all and like jason said on the chat before oh i always wondered why i'm i'm going there doing lat pull downs trying to get big lats and I feel that I didn't accomplish anything after the fucking set. It's because let pull down sucks for hypertrophy, bro. Let, let pull down sucks for 99% of everything. And myofibrillar hypertrophy, which would be going from 4 to 15 reps, because you can introduce mechanical tension, especially when you are fucking using extra external stabilizers in a movement. So the let pull down is a great candidate for. Uh, going for myofibular hypertrophy, going for introducing mechanical tension to the muscle while you are going beyond 10 to 12 reps. The lat pull down is awesome for the, awesome for this. But because when you are trying to build extra contractile tissue on the back, the back is so strong that you need insane amounts of weights that people usually don't have available on black pull down machines and also the ego boost of like doing a ton of reps with that fucking stupid amount of weight that looks like you are the most beast mode savage in the world but actually you are barely barely scratching the surface of the potential hypertrophy on your back it sucks it's a fucking one for myofibular hypertrophy, this movement cannot compare to fucking barbell rows. It cannot compare to fucking pull-ups, weighted pull-ups, chin-ups, weighted chin-ups, deadlifts. It cannot compare to them. It's not good for that. There's variations on the lat pull-downs that we are going to be exploring in other in other in other instances of these exercises reviews that are pretty great for sarcoplasmic hypertrophy like the single arm lat pull down that is awesome and that you can also introduce a ton of stretch mediated hypertrophy to eat that shit so when we review that you are going to find a way to do lat pull downs that are awesome but if right now you are extremely dissatisfied with everything that i said here in this fucking lat pull down uh, video Start doing lat prayers instead of fucking lat pull downs, which you use the exact same equipment, you use the exact same machine, and you pretty much do a pull over uh, using the same implement. So, yeah, I need to review lat prayers. Lat prayers are way superior to lat pull downs. Uh, to develop your fucking power, which power is strength expressed with speed, which is. The things that make you sprint, that make you jump, that make you punch hard as shit. Yo, let pull downs, bro. It sucks for that. Oh, it's so bad, bro. It's so fucking bad. And 
to develop your strength. If you can't develop myofibrillar hypertrophy, if you can't develop power, what do you think you can do? You will do with strength and let pull downs. I will give it a two. I will only give it a two because when you are going for 15 reps with substantial weights, uh, it starts to get taxing on your fucking forearms and you're in maintaining your grip on the implement, which is another uh, downside for this fucking movement for you to go heavy on it. It's like your grip starts to limit the fucking movement and you're not stimulating your back pretty, mu uh, pretty much at all. And yeah, since you have a good stimulation for your peripheral nervous system because it can be taxing on your grip, I'm going to give it a two just so I don't be a... Than that big of a hater of the lat pull down. So the overall score for this motherfucking shit is uh holy shit man. four seven sixteen. So sixteen out of thirty-six. That's a low score. Boom. So that's it, bros. That's the lat pull down. Oh, oh, fuck, it's already 6.12, I need to go pick up my wife. Guys, thanks for watching this live stream, and if you didn't caught the beginning of the live stream, please take a look at how I'm presenting my, my new training program that I'm developing, and let me know what you guys think on the comment, because it's really important to me that I, that I develop something that is understandable, you know, and... and, and I know that the final product, is especially the written product, is going to be really fucking awesome. But I, I also want to present it in a way that people that are not subscribed to my fucking Substack, uh, which if you want to go, go to mrpotato.substack.com, and there you will you have the, op the option to... Um, Support my effort here of sharing the, all this fucking nonsense that I learned uh, throughout the years about lifting and every training program and ebook and everything that I produce it will be the, will be available for free to everybody that is subscribed to my fucking Substack in the paid subscription option. So go there, subscribe, and you will have a ton of fucking material that I'm producing right now. And thank you guys. Stay on the fucking iron pad and bang that fucking iron for me, bruh. Let's go!